Okay, take a deep breath then. Yeah. Hi guys, we are here with your Bible reading. What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> Put your arms down. <laughs> Does that mean you're going to follow along today? No. That's what I thought. <laughs> We're going to be reading Revelation chapter 19 today. Quit. <laughs> Which means we've only got three chapters of Revelation to go. And we know. And we <laughs> will be finished with the New Testament. The, the Revelation and the whole New Testament of the Bible. We will have read through the whole New Testament in a year. And we'll be starting over with the New Testament in the book of Matthew at the beginning of the year. If you would like to follow along with us and get through the New Testament again in a year. And we would love for you to join us. Today in Revelation chapter 19, you're going to see the battle between Jesus and Jesus' army battling Satan and Satan's army at the end of the world. And you're going to see, like I was telling you yesterday, that good will triumph over evil in the end. Satan will lose. He wins for a little while why God lets him win. But when God says enough is enough, and Jesus comes back, that's it. There's no way the devil's going to win. And you'll see that today in Revelation chapter 19. And all the people that are on the devil's side will go down with the devil. So let's get into Revelation chapter 19 today. We'll be reading in the New International Version if you would like to follow along. After this, I heard what sounded like the roar of a great multitude in heaven shouting, Hallelujah! Salvation and glory and power belong to our God. For true and just are his judgments. He has condemned the great prostitute who corrupted the earth by her adulteries. He has avenged on her the blood of his servants. And again they shouted, Hallelujah! The smoke from her goes up forever and ever. Remember we was talking about the fall of Babylon yesterday. That's what they're talking about. The twenty-four elders and the four living creatures fell down and worshipped God, who was seated on the throne, and they cried, Amen, Hallelujah. Then a voice came from the throne, saying, Praise our God, all you his servants, you who fear him, both great and small. Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder shouting, Hallelujah! For our Lord God Almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory. For the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. At this I fell at his feet to worship him, but he said to me, Don't do that. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers and sisters who hold to the testimony of Jesus, worship God, for it is a spirit of prophecy who bears testimony to Jesus. 
I saw heaven standing open, and there before me was a white horse, whose rider is called Faithful and True. With justice he judges and wages war. His eyes are like blazing fire, and on his head are many crowns. He has a name written on him that no one knows but he himself. He is dressed in a robe dipped in blood, and his name is the Word of God. The armies of heaven were following him, riding on white horses and dressed in fine linen, white and clean. Coming out of his mouth is a sharp sword with which to strike down the nations. He will rule them with an iron scepter. This is Jesus on the horse, by the way. He treads the winepress of the fury of the wrath of God Almighty. On his robe and on his thigh, he has this name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, who cried in a loud voice to all the birds flying in midair, Come, gather together for a great supper of God so that you may eat the flesh of kings, generals, and the mighty of horses and their riders, and the flesh of all people, free and slave, great and small. Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. But the beast was captured, beast being the devil, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on its behalf, the Antichrist. With these signs he had deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped its image. The two of them were thrown alive into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. The rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider on the horse and all the birds gorged themselves on their flesh. And that's where we're going to stop today, guys. That was Psalm 9, or Psalm, sorry. That was Revelation chapter 19. That's where we're going to stop with Revelation today. Three more chapters to go. So the battle has been fought. And Jesus has won. The devil's been captured. Wait till you see what happens tomorrow. Our psalm today that we're going to read is Psalm 147, another beautiful psalm. It's got about 18, 19, 20 verses. Praise the Lord. How good is it to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and fitting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers the exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the numbers of the stars and calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in power. His understanding has no limit. The Lord sustains the humble but casts the wicked to the ground. Sing to the Lord with grateful praise. Make music to our God on the harp. He covers the sky with clouds. He supplies the earth with rain and makes grass grow on the hills. He provides food for the cattle and for the young ravens when they call. 
His pleasure is not in the strength of the horse, nor his delight in the legs of the warrior. The Lord delights in those who fear him, who put their hope in his unfailing love. Extol the Lord Jerusalem. Praise your God, Zion. He strengthens the bars of your gates and blesses your people within you. He grants peace to your borders and satisfies you with the finest of wheat. He sends his command to the earth. His word runs swiftly. He spreads the snow like wool and scatters the frost like ashes. He hurls down his hell like pebbles. Who can withstand his icy blast? He sends his word and melts them. He stirs up his breezes and the waters flow. He has revealed his word to Jacob, his laws and decrees to Israel. He has done this for no other nation. They do not know his laws. Praise the Lord. And that was Psalm 147, another very beautiful psalm. I love the book of Psalms. The psalms are one of the most beautiful books of the Bible, I think. One of the one of the most beautiful books of the Bible. <laughs> Excuse me. Everybody's getting sick, guys. I just talked to mom and Norman's really, really sick. He cannot stop coughing. He sounds horrible. I'm begging them to go to the doctor. Mom's coughing. Jacob, Abby's boyfriend, came to see her last night and he got sick and was throwing up in the car on the way home. Norman's sister came to visit him last for Christmas, I guess, and she was sick when she came there. That's how Norman got sick, and I guess before Norman came to stay with Mom when he was homeless, he was already in the hospital sick with bronchitis once. And now he sounds horrible. The whole time I was on the phone with Mom, all he did was cough, and I was like, if somebody don't take him to the, the hospital, I'm calling the emergency squad. I just said that, you know. Because mom's like, oh, no, you're not, neither. But if I had it, mom's like, come down here and take him then. I'm like, if I had a car, I gladly would. It would be no problem whatsoever. I would gladly take him to the hospital, to urgent care, to the ER. I would gladly take him, no problem. They're like, he's only got a Medicare card. And he has to pay a lot for his medicine. I said, well, tell them you want the cheap antibiotic. Because you know he'll have to have antibiotics. I said, tell him that you have to pay for it and he needs the cheap one. Because that's what we used to have to do when we had to pay for our prescriptions. Tell them we wanted the one on the $4 list or the cheapest one. And the doctors will try to give those ones to you. That's what we had to do or we couldn't afford to get our medicine either. There was several times Sherman and I went to the pharmacies at Walmart or Walgreens or wherever and tried to get our medicines when we were really, really sick before we had insurance, before we got our medical cards when we got disabled, and tried to get our medicine, and we didn't have the money to pay for it because it was too expensive. And I can't, I can never forget the look on that one woman at Walmart's face that worked in there. She felt so sorry for us. I know she did because I was really, really sick and I couldn't afford the medicine and she felt so bad I thought she wants to pay for this so bad but I wouldn't have let her anyway but she didn't offer anyway and I wouldn't have wanted her to but you could just tell she felt so bad because we couldn't afford it and she even tried to call the doctor back that's how much she cared she even tried to call the doctor back to see if he could give us something different something cheaper it didn't work out that way. We still couldn't afford it. He, he called in something else, but it was still too expensive. We still couldn't afford it, but she did everything she could to try to help us out. She was so, so caring. Nobody's ever, ever done that, ever. She just had a really, really good heart, and I will never, ever forget her. I don't know if she still works there or not, because we don't use that pharmacy anymore at Walmart, but... 
I'll never forget her. She was such a sweetheart. Had a really, really good heart. Even though I didn't get my medicine that day and I felt bad, my heart felt good. She made me feel better. My goodness, we got a lot of proverbs tonight. We got seven proverbs. I don't think we've ever had that many, have we? My goodness. Proverbs chapter 31, verses 1 through 7. Sayings of King Lemuel. The sayings of King Lemuel, an inspired utterance, his mother taught him. Listen, my son. Listen, son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on a woman, your vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Lemuel. It is not for kings to drink wine, not for rulers to crave beer, lest they drink and forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing, wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. Wise words from a mother to her son. And that was the sayings of King Liamu. Of his mother, actually, to King Lemuel. And that was Proverbs chapter 31, verses 1 through 7. All right, guys, we are getting so close to being finished this year with the New Testament. My gosh, this year has went fast. This month, especially, I don't know where it's gone. It is almost over. It's 28th already. Christmas has came here and gone. Everybody's taking their Christmas trees down and their card is down already. Ours is still up. We haven't had it turned on in two days, but everybody's taking them down. They haven't turned the Christmas lights back on outside since Christmas out here at the apartment. It's like it's over. They're done with it till next year, you know. I don't know when we're going to take ours down. I'm never sure it feels like it, I guess. But we're going to go over to Brother Sherm now with our homework. Find out what the Passover supper consists of. And that is what our homework question was last night. So let's let Sherm read it. Our homework question for last night was. According to the law, what was the Passover meal to be composed of? And the answer to that is. A cooked lamb, unleavened bread, and bitter herbs. And our homework question for tonight is What old man was deceived when his son dressed in goatskin? And we can find that in the book of Genesis. The very, very first book of the Bible in the Old Testament, the book of Genesis. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. I've already told you guys this story. Just think about it. You'll remember it. I never mentioned that it was goat skin. But. I'll tell you the story again tomorrow when I give the answer. You can find that in the book of Genesis, the very first book of the Bible in the Old Testament. Very first book of the Bible. And again, the question is... What old man was deceived when his son dressed in goatskin? He was deceived because he couldn't see anymore. He was blind. He was old and 
he was lost his sight. He was dying. Um, what time is it? Twenty. Twenty? Every time! The last two days it's been twenty before I start on the prayer request. Exactly twenty. Uh, how do I do that? Alright, I just added somebody else to the prayer book. Um, I mentioned prayer for her the other day, but I keep forgetting to write her name down in here. And I kept thinking about it the other day to put it in here, and I completely forgot. So, we need to really start praying hard for her. And I got her name in here now. Um, I'm going to say hers first, because hers is really important. Um, we know her, and... Um, She's a daughter to our neighbor that lives across the hall from us. Her name is Norma Boyer, and she is sick with cancer. They just found out that she has cancer. I don't know how bad it is or where she has it at, but she had to leave work. And I know it sounds like she won't be going back to work because she put on there how much she was going to miss it after being there all those years and stuff. And Norma's not that old, probably, I'm guessing, in her 50s, maybe? 40s, 50s? I'm guessing 50s. I could be wrong. She might not be that old, but that's what I'm guessing. But she's not old. You know what I mean. But Norma, she, needs, she has cancer. So please keep Norma Boyer in your prayers. She really needs prayer. Please keep Ariana Lloyd in your prayers. We want God to keep her walking and keep her legs to heal, healing and getting straight so she'll be able to keep walking and defying the doctor's odds. They said she would never be able to walk. Well, she is. She's still having to be a cast on her legs all the time, but she can walk. She has a little walker that she uses sometimes, but hey, she can walk. Please keep Tammy Ashworth in your prayers. Please keep Sarah Gillum in your prayers. Please keep Melody Ramey and Mindy Gallimore in your prayers. They both need to hopefully bring God into their lives. My sister Mindy Gallimore there, she works at Fruit Pharmacy. And I just seen her picture in the paper, so I tore it out modeling a high school coat. She's like the manager there or something. I'm not sure. Like I said, she hasn't talked to me in over three or four years. So, But I tore it out and stuck it in my notebook. Actually, I got it right here. And um, she was on TV the other day modeling the same thing, I think. But anyways, um, I just think that's really cool. Um, please keep Jimmy Myers in your prayers. Please keep Abby Myers in your prayers. Please keep Sandy in your prayers and play that she, pray that she's having good nights at work. Please pray for Roy and Lori Mollett. They both have a lot of health problems. Please keep Dora Carper in your prayers. She's a widow and lives alone. I know she gets really, really lonely at times. Please keep Jayla in your prayers. She's trying to get water to villages in Africa. God bless her heart, and please pray that she is successful in doing so. Please keep Cindy Welsh in your prayers. She's got some health problems. Please keep Doris Thompson in your prayers. She's got a lot of health problems and goes through a lot of stress. Please keep all the homeless people and animals in your prayers. This winter, it's going to be really cold at times, and... We should keep them in our prayers all the times, anyways. Please keep Rhonda Karshner in your prayers. I think Mom's starting to get sick, too, because she was coughing. She's got that smoker's cough anyway, but I think she's getting sick, too, because Norman's coughing really bad, and Mom's coughing more, you know, than she usually is, so I think she's getting sick, too. Please keep Amy Slayton in your prayers. I'm not sure if she's still sick or not, but she was last I heard. Please keep Barb Post in your prayers. You know, she's in bad shape. Please keep Annie West, Aunt Pam in your prayers. You know, she's dying of liver cancer. 
Please keep Annie West in your prayers. She asks for prayers to stay strong for her family during this time. Please keep Margie Sickles in your prayers. She has cancer really bad and is really sick right now. And please keep her husband Chuck in your prayers as well. He's sick right now. Please keep April and Linda Thacker in your prayers. April has got it really bad with her lungs right now. Her lungs are bad all the time, but she's got it really bad right now in her lungs on top of that. Please keep Eric in your prayers. He needs a kidney transplant. He's 24, lives in New Jersey, and has been on dialysis for four years. Please keep Kenny Wellman in your prayers. He needs a pancreas and a kidney transplant. And Kenny had it really bad today. I don't know if he's in the hospital or if he's home, but his sugar was down to 24 this morning, and his mom could not get him woke up. And she had to use something on him today that she's never, ever had to use on him. I don't know if it was a shot or what it was, but he woke up after... It took a while, but he finally woke up, and he couldn't see when he did wake up. But after about, I don't know how long it was, he was finally able to start being able to see again. He's got it really bad, guys. Please keep him in prayer. Please keep Macy in your prayers. She's 16 and has a brain tumor. It's not cancerous yet. Please pray that it doesn't get cancerous. Please keep Christopher Surback in your prayers. You know he's sick and he has it hard. Please keep with his health. Please keep Miranda Caverly in your prayers. She's got Crohn's disease and suffers with it a lot. And please keep her husband Jeremy Caverly in your prayers as well. Please keep Eddie Clary in your prayers. He had a heart attack recently. Please keep Ramona Henry in your prayers. She has to go get the shots in her eyes again. Plus she's still on the wound vac where she was in the hospital, remember? And she's also got diabetes really bad on top of that, which is why she's probably having taken longer to heal as well. Please keep Zach in your prayers. Zach, as far as I know, I haven't heard nothing needs prayers to still be able to swallow and talk again due to a brain injury. Please keep Sherman Crabtree in your prayers. He's got a lot of health problems. Please keep Patty, Payne, Patty Haynes in your prayers. She's got a lot of health problems. Please keep Tater in your prayers. He's going to be going through a lot with his health. Please keep Luann, Bridget, and family in your prayers. Luann's got some health things coming up too. Please keep Shannon and her little son Giovanni in your prayers. Giovanni's a little boy with a terrible rare illness. He really needs God's healing touch. And his mom, Shannon, needs prayers for strength and comfort. Please keep Rhonda Karshner in your prayers. I think I already said that. Please keep Norman Karshner in your prayers. Norman Karshner's getting really sick. All he's doing is coughing. and He just got over bronchitis, but I think he's getting back from pneumonia. Because he sounds really, really bad. So please keep Norman Karshner in your prayers. And please keep Debbie Lee in your prayers. She's got a lot of health problems. Okay, guys, that is where we're going to stop because Sherm just gave me the hand up. What's time? Hmm? What's time? It's 28. 28. So we got to get off here because the camera will cut me off at 30. I wish I could find a camera that would record me longer than I could afford. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to look. Um, let's bring those souls to Jesus. And God willing, we'll see you guys again tomorrow with another Bible reading. Come back and find out what Revelation says tomorrow, guys. Bye, guys. We love you. God bless.